Welcome back to Happy Hour here on the Filmaholic. This is our weekly movie news show. Um, not a too not too much to talk about today, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, the first the first topic I have here to start us off. Um, it, it came from the Guardian, but I, th- I think the Guardian took it from another website called We Got This Covered. Um, but there's a rumor that the MCU is going to be tackling Secret Wars soon. Um, now this is a spec. This is something. This is very much a rumor. Um, but you know, people have been speculating: Would Secret Wars be like the next big event um, that the MCU does? You know, the Russo brothers said like they were really interested in it. That'd be like the only thing that like would, might would bring them back to the MCU, which I don't think they're going to do in the next Avengers film, anyways. But who knows? Um, to me. I think they should save Secret Wars until Phase Five, and that'd be like the Avengers film of Phase Five, and because I mean I think they should do the Dark Avengers or the Dark Reign storyline, something like that for Phase Four, um, and then hopefully lead into Galactus in Phase Six. But you know, I don't know what, the, what their plan is. Secret Wars is a good way if they want to try to bring in the X Men or Fantastic Four, anything like that. Um. Now, I'm not really entirely sure what the comics version of this is. Um, I know it, the, it's, it's, a, it's a man called The Beyonder. Yeah. And he... i got to change. Do you hear a... Do you hear a weird noise? Just your voice. Okay, well, that's pretty weird. Um... But yeah, a man called the Beyonder, he brings people from to a, a planet and then makes them fight. So the idea here is that they're going to be, you know, they're introducing, it's kind of hinted at in Far From Home, but then it turns out not to be a real multiverse. But we know Doctor Strange, the sequel, is going to dive into the multiverse and bring that into the MCU. So the, the speculation here is that Secret Wars is going to be doing that and bringing people from different dimensions and stuff like that. Um versus just from different places in the galaxy. Which I think is a smart idea and a good way to adapt it. Um, but we got this covered reports that the studio wants to bring back Ben Affleck to reprise his role as Daredevil. <clears throat> yep. Um, Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine. And a new young actor playing a Tony Stark from a different dimension. Which, I mean, all of these guys would be from a different dimension, I would say, not from the actual MCU, especially Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. And I, I guess Ben Affleck's Daredevil, because I guess if you want to believe that Charlie Cox's Daredevil is in the MCU, I mean, in terms of, of his show, he is, but, you know, there's no acknowledgement of that in the MCU yeah. proper. Um,. Which, I don't know, I've, I've also read reports they want to bring Punisher into Moon Knight, so if they do that, then Charlie Cox, Daredevil, would be in the MCU. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. First of all, I really think this is fate. I mean, they might be doing the Secret War stuff, that could be true. I definitely think they will do it at some point down the line. Um, and the most believable out of these three, I think, is Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine. I can definitely see them trying to do that, because he is so iconic as the character, um, I could see them trying to bring him into it. And if you're doing, you know, something from different dimensions or whatever and maybe different time periods, there's a way that you could bring him in as Wolverine before he, before Logan or something, you know, before he died. Or maybe it's not even the same Wolverine as the one in Logan, but just a, another one from a different dimension. I could also see that being a case because that way, if he's not the same Logan from the X-Men timeline, but it's still Hugh Jackman playing Wolverine, you could actually have him wear the yellow costume, which I think they should do in the MCU to separate it from the uh, the Fox universe. So, that, I mean, that could be a situation. Um, ben Affleck reprising his role as Daredevil, which came out in 2003, um, seems highly unlikely to me that... Let's bring it back. Highly unlikely that they would want to do that, but also unlikely, I think, that Ben Affleck would do it. But it is in the MCU, so maybe I would be fine with it. Bring it back, dude. Underrated movie. Um, and after I heard this news last night, I actually, I'm going to go and watch it sometime this weekend, I think. Uh, just Don't to see. Don't watch the version on the app, dude. The one that you have? Yeah. Don't watch that version? It's the director's cut. 
Well, I don't have access to the director's cut, so. Well, if you want to, it's just, it was a very poor purchase on my part. I bought it because I saw it in the store with a case. Like, oh, director's cut, I'll watch that. Maybe sometime only comes with a director's cut. What's wrong with the director's cut? It's just longer, more annoying. Well, yeah, I want I want to revisit it. I would be perfectly fine if they brought him back as Daredevil in the MCU uh, from a different dimension. I think that would be pretty cool. Because, um, I mean, I liked this film as a kid. Like, I haven't seen it since, so don't know how I'm going to feel about it. But I just feel like it's it's unlikely. Uh, it's, it's, it's a stretch. But, you know, also, if DC isn't going to use him as Batman, bring him over as Daredevil. Um, the one that I hate out of this report is a new young actor playing a Tony Stark from a different dimension. Awful. I would be so just, ugh, if this happened. I don't want to see anybody else playing Tony Stark other than Robert Downey Jr. And he, his character is dead. Now, if you want to bring, for one film or something like that, if you wanted to bring Tony Stark from a different dimension, I want him playing it. Yeah. Uh, and you, I mean, even if he was younger in that different dimension, you could de-age him. We've already seen you do that in the movie. Civil War did it. And it's for one film, you know? Nope. That's the only way that I want it, and maybe that's what it is. This is a new young actor. Maybe it actually is him, DH. But as far as you, like, bring it in some random person um, to play Tony Stark, why? What is the... There's so many other characters that you could bring in. What would be the importance of doing that? Just to do it, man. Uh, it just seems like you don't... The, our main love for that character involves him playing it too, Robert Downey Jr. If you're just bringing in another actor, it just is unnecessary um, for no reason. It's not like you're going to bring this guy in playing the character and it's like, ah, oh, here's our new lead or people are going to make see, see it more than another movie because it's Iron Man. I don't, I don't think so, which I don't, I don't know. I just, I just hate that report in general. Um, especially, I mean, it, I don't know, maybe if it was like one scene, it wouldn't be as bad, but still, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. Um, I would rather even bring his daughter from another dimension where she's older and you can get, bring that actress back, uh, which I still don't, I still don't know why you would do that. Cause you already have her in this dimension. So I did not like that scene, <laughs> the, the lead scene with her. <laughs> but... I like, I liked the sound of it before I watched it. But when I watched it, it was unnecessary. Very, very it, awkward. Yeah. Well, there was more to the deleted scene than I thought was supposed to be in there. Um, I can't remember. It's been a while since I, I watched it. But, you know, based off what I had read, it was just her telling him that it was okay. You know, that she would be okay. And it seemed really touching. But then I, I watched it, and you said it was, it was awkward. It was just... I don't know. Glad they cut it. Yeah. Um, but moving on from that, uh, which, uh, well, I'll also throw this in. If they, if they do that, if they were to bring back Wolver uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, that opens the door to possibilities, too, of where you could just bring back anybody you wanted from X-Men. I mean, you could potentially bring in Fassbender as Magneto. It's not going to happen, dude. Uh, if you bring, I mean, if you're bringing them in... Why not? Give up on that, dude. I'm not saying I want it. I think they should just regas at this point. Because to me, I mean, unless I, I don't want them bringing the same Wolverine that was in the Fox universe. Because to me, he's dead. I don't want to see yeah. any kind of way retcon that. The only thing is, it's like I, like I said, if you do have Hugh Jackman come back to play Wolverine, and I don't think that's really going to happen either. But if it did have him as the actor but change the character make make him wear the costume change how the x-men are but it just he happens to look the same um but then that's also a question of like well why do the other people from different dimensions not look like their characters in the mcu don't worry about it so i don't know uh also in in terms of marvel a report came out this week that the character hercules uh may appear in an upcoming mcu film what do you think about that I don't care. No? Cool. Just give me my Hercules movie. Like, 
But not the MCU Hercules. <laughs> yeah, not the MCU one. Just give him a Hercules movie. Surprise! It's going to tie in. It is so, going to be this. It's going to be the same one. The Russo brothers are involved. Um, I think this will probably be Thor: Love and Thunder. Well, I mean, that would be the one that makes sense. Uh, I mean, you already had the War World type, the uh, where Hulk was and stuff connected to that, maybe. Um, I don't know. Maybe this is the character that Christian Bell's playing. I don't know too about her, too much about Hercules in the MCU, so. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but that would be the the film that I, my mind would jump to would be either Thor: Love and Thunder, potentially Captain Marvel, or whatever the next Avengers is. If it was Secret Wars, he could maybe he could be in that. But. It's just a report. Um, the next topic, Walter Hill, um, who is the director of the movie The Warriors and 48 Hours. He's also a producer of all the Alien films and has a story credit on Aliens, the sequel. Um, he apparently sent Sigourney Weaver a 50-page treatment recently on a new Alien film that would revolve around w- Ripley. Um, but she doesn't seem too excited to return. Um, her quote is, I don't know. Ridley has gone in a different direction. Ridley Scott. Uh, maybe Ripley has done her bit. She deserves a rest. Um, does not seem like she's going to be returning as Ripley. I guess there goes your hope for, you know, crossover with her and Arnold. Well, I never thought that was going to happen anyways. I yeah. think it would, I think it'd be smart. I'd like to see it, but I don't think it would happen. I don't, I wonder what his 50 page treatment is, but obviously. Nothing impressive. Well, that's my that's my thing too. It must not be anything oppressive. She's just like ah, maybe the character's done. Um, but but also maybe she doesn't want to get her hopes up either because you know it's it's interesting. And I wonder if, like maybe does she have any hard feelings towards Ridley Scott? Um, in in terms of I don't know when that Alien Five that was supposed to be actually Alien Three with uh was it Neil Blomkamp yeah. that he was supposed to make. I remember when that film was in talks, he had already talked to Sigourney Weaver and everything. She was on board to come back for that film and was excited about it. She talked about how, like, she was passionate about the the script and everything, and, like, she was interested. And now, you know, that's changed. And I think part of the reason he, Blomkamp ended up getting taken off that was because of Ridley Scott. Um and that film not getting made in general because he kept wanting to push his or well, alien covenant and what he wanted to make after that. Um, so I, I feel like that plays into her comments, you know, you I mean saying he has gone in a different direction. That's clearly Prometheus and alien covenant. Um, but I, I really just don't see Disney making a third movie in that trilogy. No. I would like to see it so that you can just complete it. Um, but I just I don't see it happening. Um, I, I think, like I've said in the past, when Disney decides to do a new movie, I think it would either be a rebuttal with Sigourney Weaver, which is what this guy I feel like was probably doing. I can't imagine it taking place after Resurrection. Um, but once again, I don't even know what happens in that movie. I don't know if I've seen it or if I do. If I did, I can't remember it. I, I know Alien. I saw Alien Three, but maybe she dies in Alien Three at the end of it. I don't know. I watched it. Don't remember. But that's been so long ago. I don't even. The only one that I own and have clear memory of is Alien. Well, I own Prometheus and Alien Covenant too, but of, of the of the actual old Alien films, um, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't. I wouldn't say that she's completely, you know, saying she's not coming back. You know, if Disney gets on board and they're trying to like pitch her some ideas and some money. Maybe, but not for this guy. I think anything other than the producer role, Ridley Scott is also out. No matter what he said about like, ah, oh, I want to do this with a franchise, dude. I don't see Disney doing that. Um, talking about sequels that uh, uh, you know, sequels that aren't going to get made. Judd Apatow uh, has an idea for Pineapple Express too. That's all it's ever going to be. Uh, an idea, exactly. Um, 
we already saw Pineapple Express too. And just watch. This is the end. There's a part of the film. Yeah. It that's Pineapple Express too. They actually do it in the movie, and it's funny. <laughs> um, it's too late for that comedy, dude. And honestly, like hearing him talk about it, like that's all I could think about was <laughs> that sequel they made inside that movie because it's like talking about league weed becoming legalized. Woody Harrelson. And, and yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I mean, if you wanted to make that film, I would go and watch it. Danny McBride is the villain. Yeah. Do it, man. But, you know, it's been so long, you know, 12 years since right now. So if you ended up making this film, you're going to add like another two years. It wouldn't come out until like 2022, probably. 12 to 14 years from, I just don't see it. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say it wouldn't make money, though, because, I mean, Seth Rogen is still relevant, and people still know what Pineapple Express is. I feel like if it was good, people actually still would go see it. But I don't know. Um, you also have the issue of James Franco. Yeah. Um, it hasn't really been making anything. So. Except uh, that zero reveal that everybody went to see. That movie sucked. But that... <laughs> Well, see, also with Zeroville, that was made what several years ago, like yeah. when he, right after he, or while he was making the Disaster Artist, is when that production started. So that was like a that was a long time ago, and uh, I don't know what he's done since then or what what's happening, but this movie's not happening. I if he was gonna make a C, I don't know, I'd rather see a Super Bad too than a Pineapple Express too. Bring him in, dude. Bring him in later, you know, 10 years later. Well, no, it's been... Just 10 years later. 14 years now since yeah. Superbad, Superbad came, out. came out. So, so yeah. yeah. Kind of, kind of a reunion for the... 20-year reunion, that's what we need. Yeah. Uh, Dakota Johnson, she is going to be starring in a new show called Rodeo Queens, which is a new uh, mockumentary-style comedy series for Amazon. Did you read about that? How do you feel about it? Yeah, I like her. So I like her. I like mockumentary style comedy. Um, so I'm definitely going to be checking it out. Hopefully, it's good. Um, it, you know, it, it said it was about a, like a group of rodeo queens, I guess, competing for like the head queen or whatever. I don't know too much about it, but it sounds like it could be interesting, funny. Um, kind of surprised that she took that role. Um, for a show, like a comedy show like that, but um, I'm interested. It's gonna be on Amazon too, so I have access to it. Uh, I hope it's a better comedy than Space Force, um, which I don't think Space Force is awful, but it is a disappointment. So yeah. we'll see. Uh, and talking about Space Force, and you know, Dakota Johnson was also in the Office, the series finale. She had that little small bit. Um, but Steve, I read reports last night, and this is a huge surprise to me, but Steve Carell, you know, he was a producer on The Office. Um, I'm not sure what season he stepped in as producer, but which we are also going to be doing an Office rewatch sometime this year, probably towards, sometime probably towards year. the end of summer, uh, early fall. We're going to be doing that. Um, excited to do that. And we're going to be, so we can talk about like, behind the scenes stuff with each episode and whatnot and uh i'm excited to do that but steve carell was a producer in season six when we had pam and jim's wedding so apparently the original plan for this episode was to have roy come back and he was going to try he didn't know that she was pregnant and he was going to try to stop the wedding he was going to come to the wedding on a uh, white horse i think it said white horse um and try to stop it. And then he's going to find out that she's pregnant. And then apparently Dwight tells him he can take the horse off his hands or something. And then the episode ends with the horse going over the side of Niagara Falls. Which I don't understand that either. Like Dwight just like puts it on a raft and sends it over the edge. I'm not. I'm confused of. It didn't really explain that too much other than they were going to throw the horse off of the, uh, the waterfall. Uh... But Steve Carell was like, nah, th- this sounds bad. <laughs> uh, when I read it, my only problem, like, 
you know, do whatever you want with a horse. You know, I don't know. It's, I don't know why that would be your idea, but whatever. Roy coming back just doesn't make sense because you already had him and Jim kind of like reconcile when they went for drinks when Pam was in New York. Yeah. When they left early, you know, Jim met them at the bar and Roy was there, you know, that's when he told him like, oh, yeah, she's dating uh, me. Like They shook hands, so he was over it at that point. So that's what, that would have made sense to me for him to come back. Like, oh, especially on a horse. I don't know where you're getting the horse. He rented it, dude. I don't know. You can have him drunk. He's got alcohol problem. Hey, man. It's the only problem from your perspective. Um, but yeah, that was the only thing is they had already reconciled that character, you know, being okay with Jim, Dayton, Pam. So that's what doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um, the whole idea of throwing a horse off Niagara Falls sounds really stupid. Like, I don't know the context, like I said, but it sounds really stupid. Him coming to the wedding on a horse sounds really stupid. Uh, and it sounds like something that would be in Parks and Rec later on, <laughs> which I have a like to me, that's like not funny. It's like over the top. And that's what Steve Carell was saying, how he thought and they do more stuff sort of stupid like this in season nine, which is part of my problem with that season of, of The Office. But the earlier seasons, there's like ridiculous, stupid stuff in it. Sure. But for the most part, everything is still like believable in The Office, I think of grounded where you could see like somebody could be this stupid or do these weird situations except michael scott's hair the what except michael scott's hair just growing back <laughs> but i don't know like you know he he read the script they were talking about it doing production on it and he was like i think we're jumping the shark here or he was like i i think this is um this is too much he's like i just i'm not for it and they were like, oh, what do, you, what do you mean? It's funny. That's why he wasn't invited back after season seven. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll give you this, but uh, that's it. Because <laughs> like, like he said, he said, this sounds like a joke that would be on The Simpsons, not The Office. So and apparently in the office, so. they listened to him, and then this has became one of the fan favorite episodes. Um, split into two parts there. Um. I just, it sounds really bad. You'll never know. I wish you'd also kind of list, like, maybe helped us with uh, Space Force. I don't know. He's a producer on that. I just don't understand. Because it has some over-the-top stupid stuff in it, too, that I was hoping would be more like The Office, and it's kind of not. Um, next topic, Kieran Kusama. Um she says that her Dracula will be fairly faithful, but not the romantic hero version um, that we've seen in the past. And the film would be giving Dracula a voice himself because there's a lot of characters in Dracula. And um, usually it's, it's from, I guess, from their perspective more than it is from Dracula's yeah. and, and showing him. So this one is going to be showing everybody's voice, including him. What do you think? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as of right now. We'll see who he, uh, they get to play Dracula. I'm still hoping it's Michael Fassbender. It's Keanu Reeves, man. I get Keanu Reeves too. But you know, she says fairly faithful. I wonder if this means it is going to be a period piece. Yeah, probably. Um, which is surprising to me because I really thought this was going to be a modern day adaptation. Which I mean, I guess you could say it's just taking. I mean, I guess you could take the original story. And just put it in modern day and change everything, but still keep all the same story elements. Maybe, I don't know. Um, like for the other characters, uh, other than Dracula? It'd be interesting. Um, I would kind of like to see it in modern day because I mean, you're already doing Invisible Man in modern day, you're going to do Wolfman in modern day. I'd like to see like a modern day Dracula. Um, but, you know... I mean, if we if it was a past one, that'd be fine too. We've already seen the ones in the past a couple times, um, but they haven't really blown me away. I I like the 30s, the 1930s black and white Dracula. Uh, I watched it in horror, my horror film class, and I remember enjoying it, but I don't know. I've only seen it once. Um, I didn't like Coppola's Bram Stoker's. I didn't like that. You didn't get it, dude. 
Less the only one. the only and Keanu Reeves was in that. The only thing um I liked about that film was the opening is pretty cool where we see him before he becomes the vampire or maybe he's already a vampire, I can't remember, but we see him like in his army and killing people and stuff out in like a battlefield and stuff like that. All of that was really cool. I liked seeing that in the opening, but then the movie went downhill after that for me. Uh still didn't care for it. Um James Bond, this is a spoiler. Um uh, I figured you weren't going to be too happy, but... I didn't really care. They put the news out there. James Bond, he's going to have a five-year-old daughter in No Time to Die. Um, perfect time to die. <laughs> I don't... They haven't officially confirmed it. I don't think... Uh, they came out and said, oh, it is his daughter, but there was a five-year-old girl cast in the film um, that has scenes with him, I guess, early on, and him and uh, the, the female lead. And this film takes place five years after Spectre, so... Imagine that. It's, it's going to be his daughter. Um, I actually like this a lot, and it actually kind of makes me more excited for the film. Um, yeah. You know, I just recently rewatched Casino Royale and uh, Quantum of Solace. Casino Royale, I barely gave it a like, three stars. I know you like it a lot more. A lot of people like it. To me, it was just, it was boring. Um, but it wasn't bad. Uh, but I did, I. I don't think I'll watch it again. Quantum Solace sucked. Um, and then I'm going to rewatch Skyfall and Spectre before this one comes out. And I know I remember liking Skyfall a lot. So I, I figure that'll stay the same. And I remember not liking Spectre. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that's going to stay the same. Uh, so I haven't been that excited about this one. Other than, you know, Anna Armas is in it. So I'm excited about that part. But And the trailers haven't been bad. But it's just like... With Spectre, the last film, I was excited for that, and so, but this this makes me more excited because it adds more to his character, and there's more at stake. Like, there's more of what he could lose, what he's fighting for. Um, making him a father is also, I don't think, something that we've seen before in the films. I I don't know. I haven't watched all the the films, uh, but. I know I did some research of um, some of the books when I was watching Quantum of Solace and because uh, I was bored out of my mind, I just started like, looking up some of the books. Um, and he does have a kid, um, I think it's with a Japanese woman, um, in one of the books. And then apparently that book ends with him with her, but then he's planning on leaving and then like, he goes away from her and they don't ever come back to it until like the, I think like 10, 20 years later, I want to say. Um, yeah. And they, they bring it back, but then the kid and it's like the kid's grown up at this point and then it gets, gets killed. Like so, it. yeah. Sounds impressive. So I don't know. I think it's a good decision. Uh, I'm excited. It adds, makes me more excited for the film. Uh, next topic. So, Gone with the Wind has been removed from HBO Max um, after uh, J- John uh, Ridley, who is a writer for 12 Years a Slave, Red Tails, the m- most recent Ben Hur, um, he did a plea for them to remove it, and they did. Uh, for now, the film will return with a discussion of its historical context. What do you think? You don't want to watch it. Don't watch it. I don't know. Um, I don't know why you need to take it off. I don't know. It, it's hard for me to talk. It's hard like for me to talk. I, I, I haven't I seen. What else they have on HBO Max? That's that's my thing. Like, is that the only thing that is questionable as far as historical context? Like, I don't know what your library I doubt is. It. As I mean, well, it's also four hours, so nobody is watching that movie every day i may eventually watch it because i i think it won best picture and at some point i might go and watch all the movies that won best picture i think that's a free poor thing that we should do at some point um oh, i mean that's a whole weekend right there dude <laughs> what this or the win because i can't imagine it just keeping my attention no definitely not so uh, it's like, all right, i know i'm not gonna enjoy it i mean you don't know no, I know. Um, Favorite movie? Get out of the way, Tarantino. <laughs> uh, 
and I do think them adding. Well, when I first read it, I thought they were going to add something to the film, and I'm like, I don't like that. I don't think you should alter any film. Um, but it's they're not altering the film; they're keeping the film, but they're just adding. I get. I don't know if it's going to be something that's attached to it that you have to watch at the beginning because I'm like, you're going to add something else to a four-hour film, or if it's going to be something that's like, hey, we recommend you watch this. It's really them saying they don't want to be promoting this film as if they believe in the stuff that is in the film, I guess, and how things are interpreted. Um, or well, presented no service at all. But the thing with me is like, and I don't know. I guess there's people that view things differently in terms of that. But who watches this film and thinks it's okay how people are are presented? I mean, it came out and what? When did this come out in the 30s or 40s? 39, I think. I mean, a lot of stuff that came out back then. Yeah. Doesn't hold up. I mean, in terms of that kind of stuff. Nearly a hundred years ago, of course, it doesn't hold up. Um, and that's why, like, I, I have very few, fi- like, a lot of the films when I watch stuff that came out back, I mean, even uh, '80s, uh, doesn't make it to like a five star rating or anything like that. It's high because I take off for certain stuff like that. I know you don't because you try to look at it and like when it came out, but. It takes away the viewing experience for me. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I don't know. I kind of, kind of I guess, I guess, off of what off. we're saying here. I, I think they should put the historical context thing up um, to let people watch it, even if it was like a documentary talking about like movies at this point and how uh, this isn't the only film that has shown uh, people like this talking about that and how it was wrong. But removing it until you do that, like I said, I don't care, really. I, if, if you don't want to promote it. But like I said, I can't imagine that's the only thing on there that's questionable. No. I mean, like I said, if you have any film that's old like that, it's probably going to be questionable. And you have like a whole section for classics, I think, is what I saw on some article. So it's definitely not the only thing. It doesn't really affect me. I don't have HBO Max. And if I did, I'm probably still not going to watch this film. I, think so I, I don't care. But I it's just... I'm streaming on Amazon, too, so it's like I can just watch it there. I, I don't know why you would take it off if you're just going to put it back. I mean, it's not cool, the stuff that's represented. So, I mean... But who... I don't know who's watching this film and thinking that it is. That it is, like, accurate. And if you are, you're not going to change your opinion. So, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And, and the article, I was reading one article and it was talking about this and the birth of a nation and how, well, this film is iconic. I don't know how important to cinema this film is, but I haven't read up on it. Like, Other than it was the first African-American woman to win an Oscar, um, which if you watch... It was playing like a mammy or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's not... That's part of the historical context thing that they're going to put up that's going to talk about that. Um, but I mean, everything was fucked up, you know, back, I mean, it still is, but back then, um, with, they wouldn't even let her sit in the, uh, in the room. I mean, you saw that in Hollywood. We watched it. Um, it didn't show her doing that, but she talked about it. Uh, yeah. So. I, like I said, I don't know. Other than that, like I don't know how important like the film is to cinema, other than being iconic. The Birth of a Nation, I have had to see to see. Uh, we had to watch it twice, um, which we might it might have been three times, and I just didn't watch it for film appreciation. But I know I had to watch it in my media history class, my freshman year of college, and then I took another film history class later and had to watch it. But I skipped the class because I'm like I'm not watching this film again. Um, I skipped it both times. So you haven't seen the film? No. It didn't seem I, something I would care for. Uh, I'd already skipped other films. Well, no, it was at the, it was at the beginning. Yeah. Well, it, it, it t- when, when you watch that film in school, it takes literally at least two classes to watch it. Yeah. I, think, I think with my media history class, which was a long class, it took two. I thought two. it took two and some change. Maybe it did. I don't. I can't remember. But I don't know. I wasn't there. I skipped them. Wasn't there. 
Um, I fell asleep, I think, maybe, in the media history one. Because it was such a big room that nobody was paying attention and the lights were off. Um, you know, it's like four hour long, black and white, um, which that's nothing wrong with that, but silent film, which isn't for me in general. Like, I'm just, no, not for me. Not for you. Um, but also extremely racist. Um, but, you know, that film is important to cinema because of it was the first film like that in terms of uh, being a narrative feature edited like that with so that kind of storytelling uh, linear, I guess. Um, but I don't I wouldn't even show that in school. Like I would talk about would talk it about and maybe show some clips. Watch it if you want <laughs> on your own. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm not showing it in my class. Like can't imagine being a teacher and just watching that every year. <sighs> no. <sighs> Kill me. And that's when I watched it. It, 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 it. Donaldson talked about it too, but when we watched it in uh, Cook's class, my film history, um, he talked about like the racism and everything. But I'm just like, if you, even if you want to spend one class talking about it and maybe showing clips from it and, and talking about its significance in terms of filmmaking, I don't know why we have to watch the whole damn thing. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's brutal. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't have much more to say about Let's this. Um, the next topic: Zack Snyder says that Cyborg is the heart of his Justice League. Woo! I don't know. He keeps saying things about this movie, and it just. I don't, I don't care. It's just never going. It's not going to release. It's a joke. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I'm looking forward to his cut. See what's different. Hopefully, it's good. Um. I can't say that I'm excited when he says Cyborg is the heart of it because I don't like how he was used in the Justice League that we got and he wasn't in any other films other than that one yet. So I think the CGI looked awful on him. Hopefully they touch that up and fix it in, in Snyder's version. Um, but I'm not really hopeful that that's one of the things that he's going to change is the effects. Uh and then other than that, I don't remember him getting much of anything in the film than just kind of being there. So not really affected either way. I think his parents are supposed to die in Snyder's version. I can't remember if they did in the... Uh... it. What? Spoiler. Nah. They posted a photo of them, like, dead and, like, a cyborg, like, seeing them in a dream or something. I didn't, I didn't watch it. Fell asleep during the movie. Well... For all I know, that could have been in the movie, and I don't remember it. This will be a whole new experience for me, like, watching it, because I kept dozing off in the theater, so. Um, there's a rumor that Matt Reeves is Batman. So, I read this week. Um, the main report is that the Batman sequel will have the Joker in it. Um, and the full report says that there will be some sort of reference to the character in, in this first film. The second film will introduce the Joker, and then he will carry over into the third film. Yeah. Um, which I know some people are like against it because we've seen the Joker. I think I've always think that's stupid to be against the Joker is Batman's main villain. If you're doing a trilogy of Batman films, the Joker absolutely needs to be a part of that trilogy. Yeah. Um, now. My thought this whole, time, this whole time in terms of him terms of making of him. a trilogy, I, I've, I've had the hope that the Joker would come in and be the villain in the third and final film. Putting him in the sequel, I'm okay with, but I'm a little surprised about that, given especially since we had hit that solo Joker movie come out just last year. Um, I felt like they would get a little bit of distance <clears throat> from that before they would do him, uh, bring him in again. But, you know, the report says he would be in the sequel and then carry over to the third. Does that mean he's the main villain in the sequel? Or that he's just introduced in the, in the sequel and then he would be the main villain in the third one? Because that's kind of how I'm, I'm seeing and hoping it is. Uh, I don't know. I think he'll be pulling the strings in the second one. You think? Because, um, like I say, if, if you're teasing him at the end of the first one, I can't imagine you just not using him that much in the second one. 
Well, here's my theory and kind of my hope, because we haven't really seen we haven't seen this version on the big screen. I hope they do the Red Hood angle, which do you know too much about that? I've watched the animated movie. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the animated movie. I'm not talking about Jason Todd. I'm talking about Joker. What is going to happen? Um, so Joker was Red Hood first, yeah. uh, and he was a gangster, and he ends up falling in the pit when Batman's after the Red Hood, and that's what turns him to the Joker. I hope they do with that. Do that. So I hope you have the new Batman movie, and instead of a Joker being mentioned, it's Red Hood is mentioned in this first Batman movie. And then in the second film, have Bat be him. Have him be the Red Hood in the second film, and he falls in the pit in the second film and becomes Joker, and that leaves a cliffhanger of the third, second film of him. The uh, Joker's there. If, if you get that, I don't think it's going to be a cliffhanger. It's going to happen early on or something. Uh, I, just, I, I don't think it's going to be where... Cause the, See, I from, think that's a mistake. I don't. From the report I read talking about you know, him being in the second and third movie, I don't think it's going to be... Because then you wouldn't you wouldn't tease the Joker. In you're the teasing movie. that character, but you're not saying it's the Joker. But I mean, this is just a report. I don't know. That's I that's think what. It's going to be some kind of mention of the Joker, and then you're going to get the Joker. You're probably right. But you'll get I, your when I get my Batman Beyond show. I think it's better. It's different. You haven't had this before on the big screen. Mention the Red Hood. In the first one, in the second film, because you you think that the penguin's gonna be the main villain in the second film. From what Colin Farrell said, yeah. Well, he he's only playing a small role in the first one. I don't even know if he's gonna be the villain in the second film or if he's gonna like play a small role in all of these movies, kind of like Scarecrow maybe did, or you know, in the sequel. I don't know. But let's just say the penguin is the main villain in the second film. We set him up in the first one; he becomes the main villain in the second film, which he's like a, a gangster type club owner. Um. If that's the case in the second one, the Red Hood could be working for him on a physical side, you know, whatever he does, Red Hood does, kill people, I don't know. Um, have him work for the Penguin in the second film. And we don't know too much about him. Maybe we do. I don't know how much they're going to show of this version of the Joker. And then have him within the film, I would say at least halfway through towards the end of the film, have him fall into the pit uh, and become the Joker. And then that way you actually have the Joker proper in the third film. Um, but, you know, that goes to also, we don't know, we don't know too much about this Batman yet of how ground, we know it's supposed to be grounded. People, I, I guess you would most compare it to Nolan's Batman movies um, yeah, right yeah. now. So would they even have him fall in a pit of, of acid or whatever? Yeah, chemicals. I, I don't know. Yeah, because that's you know you're gonna die. Um, <laughs> right. So, I, I, and and then also that's kind of the big thing with the Joker is always like I mean that that's a whole another storyline with that. You know if you if that was gonna be made at some point, but with the Joker, it's always like his mysterious background is what's interesting about him. And so I know that, a lot of people were for that. Um, that takes some of the mystery out of it. I don't. I don't care about that. Um, How dare you? Because I mean, we've already seen we've already seen that version before. Um, so, and I mean, they literally just did that Joker movie too. Would you like? What are you talking about? That's not the Joker, man. Um, already but, explained it to you. But they are comics that you can adapt i mean there's the one with him being the comedian and stuff like that but there's also like you don't even have to go into his background of like who he is or you know his childhood or anything like that you could just introduce this character as red hood and not give us any kind of anything about him other than just him being this criminal and then have him turn into the joker yeah don't but still that. but still keep his background before we meet him, a secret. I don't know. We haven't seen the Red Hood on, on film like that. I think it, it would make sense to do that. And also, that would, you know, lay the groundwork, too, if they ever want to do the Jason Todd Red Hood storyline in the future, it could tie back to that. 
Yeah, he could, I guess. But like I say, I just I don't know. I haven't seen this movie yet, so I don't know what kind of vibe to expect. Right. Who do you want to play the Joker? Get out of here, man. Not, not your choice. What's wrong with my choice? I don't know. I just don't. I just don't see it. I think it is going to be a, He's a fantastic my, actor. My choice is Lakeith Stanfield, and uh, I actually think that is going to be it's going to play the Joker next. He's a great actor. I don't know. I just don't see it. Why? Yeah. I don't know. I'd rather him do like some other. I don't know. I can really see it. I, um, but you got to do something different this time. This time. You can't just keep doing the same thing. That's what people are tired of. Tired of. Yeah, um, don't come out with it. And I think he would be a very different casting choice. Uh, we, all, we obviously haven't seen a black Joker before. Um, but I think his age is appropriate to Pattinson's version of Batman. He's a good actor. Um, and I think that he would fit into, as of right now, the world that Matt Reeves is creating uh, with his villains. It, I don't know. It all just depends on how old the Joker's going to be. Yeah. I mean, we don't we don't know. But, I mean, if this is him early as Batman, I would say... Just, just because Batman Joker doesn't mean the Joker has to be... It doesn't have to be. You, I mean, you can. Um, but, I mean, it just depends. Uh, I know some people want Willem Dafoe. That picture definitely intrigued me. I saw on Twitter... I'll say, oh, I mean, I love Willem Dafoe, and I wouldn't yeah. be like, I wouldn't be pissed if he was cast, but that's not. That, he, to me, he's too old. I don't want an old Joker like that. I that, want the that, Joker that to be. Me, I want the Joker to be. Well, the pictures are not a good representation, anyways, because I think I Lakeith, Lakeith that's, was on those photos, and those that makeup they put on him was awful. Like, I don't want him to look like that in the movie. I don't even know who one of them was, to be honest. Um. Uh, I couldn't. I was like, I don't know who you are. I don't think. Or maybe. It's a maybe Will it was Poulter? Some, maybe it was something else I saw. Uh, Johnny Depp was one of them. What? Well, that's been a rumor in the past, was that, that they were going to have him play the Joker in this trilogy, I which know. I think is a huge mistake. Not for that at all. Um, I don't have a problem with him. Johnny Depp. Get I don't care, about, don't care about Johnny Depp anymore. Don't bring – and that's another that's like, ah, oh, you have all of these other interesting options, and you go to somebody who's played all these weird characters, and you're like, ah, oh, let's just have him play the Joker. Oh, I think he, he hasn't gets done, the right director. He hasn't done anything good in years. This could be it, man. Why bring him back for a big film like that? I'd rather be. Especially with the stuff going on around him. Uh, that goes back – that's a whole that's other a topic. Good. But that goes back to the people in power. I mean, it's like of them making a the decision, oh, I'm going to put – I'm going to give this person the opportunity. Oh, my Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake what? Gyllenhaal would be fantastic. But he could play anything. So I wanted him as Batman originally. Well, what you want? I want Ryan Gosling. I didn't get it. So. I want Ryan Gosling as Harvey Dent. Batman or die. Which I also want Harvey Dent in this trilogy. Give me that. That's that's what I would like to see. Is um... and that one I just don't know if you will get. Why? I don't know. Just don't care is about Two Face. Well, man, don't I just don't know. I, like it's just another one of those things. Like he's not going to be in the first movie. Which I think's a mistake. Why is he not? I feel like you would have announced that already. And then if you've got Penguin. If you have Penguin as the main, or at least, you know, a bigger villain in the second one with the Joker, do I really want to see Harvey Dent only in the third movie, just like the Dark Knight? Does it just... Well, see, that's probably my... If I was making a young Batman tril trilogy, what I would do is, I think you should have had Harvey Dent in all, all three of the films. I think you should have introduced him in the first film as assistant DA... Second film, he's the district. He becomes district attorney, and the third film, he becomes Two Face. And that way, you see his character arc all the way through the films, 
and how he trying to make Gotham a different, better place, and his story parallels with Batman's. But if, if you're not introducing him in the first movie, I don't want it. Well, see, that's the thing, too. It's like how how much time passed between each movie. Because, I mean, you could still introduce him in the second film as district attorney and then have him as Two-Face in the third film, and I'd be okay. I, I still think you should have him in the first one, but if you only introduce him in one film and have him become Two-Face in that same film, I don't want it. Because we we, we've already seen that in The Dark Knight, and that's too rushed for his character arc. That seems Should, like the most realistic for what I know so far about this trilogy. He, he's got to be in two films at, at least. So if, if we don't get him in the second one, I don't want him in the third one. But I just I think that would be really cool. And Gosling would be my casting choice for that. Where's Mr. Freeze? No one cares about Mr. Freeze. <laughs> no one cares. Yeah. No. Please. But yeah, and then the last story, as always, is Star Wars related. Um, not too big of a story, um, but you know, speaking with some of the the crew of the Mandalorian, John Favreau, Deborah Chow, I think some other directors were there. Um, but John Favreau confirmed that season two of Mandalorian is still set to come out in October. It's not getting pushed back or anything. They've still been working on um, posts and everything since all the virus stuff's happening. And it's ready to go in October. So that makes me happy. Also just goes to show they have they know what they're doing with the Mandalorian. That should be the future of Star Wars. Uh Favreau and, and that team with Deborah Chow and those people, Taika, um, Dave Filoni, those people know what they're doing. They they're pushing like George Lucas would the technology. Like I've watched been watching this behind the scenes stuff with the Mandalorian and it's blown me away. Like that set with the round room is just incredible. Um, and then them tying everything in. We know the stuff they're doing in season two, the stuff they did in season one. Um, they're just really doing great work. I hope season two doesn't disappoint me story-wise. But um, happy about that. Unfortunately, Deborah Chow said that Kenobi, which she's directing all every episode of Kenobi, which is great because her episodes of season one of Mandalorian are the best episodes. And we know... You know, they announced Kenobi was happening at Star Wars Celebration. They brought Ewan McGregor on stage. Kathleen Kennedy said that they had the scripts ready and they were going to be filming soon. Sure. Okay? Then after that, they, I guess, got rid of the guy who wrote Drive, who had originally wrote these scripts, and they brought in a new director who I think was the guy who wrote King Arthur, the most recent one, I want to say. Yeah. Brought him in, and he's he's writing the new uh, scripts. Apparently, they're still writing them. I don't know. Deborah Chow said that Kenobi, because they were talking about how soon and everything Mandalorian was coming out, and she said that they they weren't that far ahead on Kenobi. She said that it was still in development stage. Man, what a disappointment to hear. <laughs> this move, this, I just, what's going on, guys? How hard is it to crack this fucking story? Tough, dude. This should have been the first standalone film that came out. And we're still waiting on the show. You'll but you open. announced, what was it this year? This no, year? No, no, last, no, last year, year, 2019. Yes. Yeah. At Celebration. Oh, man. You, and I was hoping. And you'll keep waiting. That's what they said. I was hoping that when they announced it, that we, or I know a lot of people was hoping that we was going to get it in 2020. I, I thought that was too optimistic. I thought we were going to get to Kenobi in 2021. And I thought Cassie and Andor was going to come out in 2020 because they announced that like five fucking years ago, it feels like, and we still don't have it. What's happening? <laughs> Are they even filming that show? No. Taking a break. And it's like with that show, with Cassie and Andor, like, if you didn't, if you came to me with that pitch for that show, you better have everything like already planned out. Like, I, that show should have been done. <laughs> Otherwise, they shouldn't have made it because that's not a show that I ever would have greenlit. Well, they should have um, been in the first place. Because so. I just who I don't care. Like there's so many other characters you could have made, but you know they're making it. I, you one would assume that they came. Somebody came to them with a, a great pitch, uh, which maybe they did. I'm not blaming like the people involved of of making the uh, the writing or whatever in terms of Cassie Andor. I just don't know what's going on with that situation. Um, but the same thing with Kenobi. I mean, like they had these screenplays ready. They got Deborah Chow on as director, and then they're like, ah. Oh, we decided we don't like the, the scripts. 
What? Did you not like them when you greenlit it? Did you just not read it and you were like, ah, screenplays are written? We'll finally greenlit this. People keep talking about it. I don't know why people like Kenobi. <laughs> It's not even been in one of our Disney films. And then what, you and McGregor back? Man, he's old. Get him out of here. Oh, uh, but then I know, what was it? Bell told me that he saw in a report, and I think this is still rumored that, or maybe it was you that told me that there was a report that um he wasn't even going to be in the series or wasn't going to be. Uh, Bell said that. I don't know what. And, and, and I can't imagine that being true, but like it, that he wasn't even going to be in most of the series Kenobi and that it was going to be following a different character. And then they find Kenobi towards the end of the show. Uh, Bell said that. I did not say that at all. People would yeah. lose their fucking minds. Like in, me included. Like, first episode, I would, what's going on here? If I'm two episodes in and Kenobi's still not showing up, turn it off. Ooh. What? He should be at the first scene. That's if why the show's about yeah. him. If you don't want to put him in the first scene, or what, but if you're not in the first episode, I'm out, dude. You lost me. But, but I don't know. I don't know. And then, and then and I've and also then read also reports that, that he originally it was just about him being on Tatooine and watching over Luke and fighting like um, the Tusken Raiders and stuff. Which I'm still kind of worried that is the direction they're going to take it, which is not as interesting to me. I mean, if you're still dealing with him and PTSD of everything that happened and flashbacks, it's interesting. Like, I'd rather have that than nothing. But I make him fight Vader one more time. You know, have him start the series off with him watching over Luke. And then some, a mission, maybe from Bell Organa, something like that happens, takes him off planet. And uh, you know, Qui-Gon needs to be in it. Force Ghost, teaching him how to become a Force Ghost. That was also a report I read recently somewhere, was that the show was going to show how he learns how to become the Force Ghost, which it should. Um, yeah. I think you should have maybe one episode or a couple where... Either you could have him show him go to Dagobah and have a scene with Yoda, maybe around the middle of the, of the season. I think I would do that. Or maybe if he's just like communicating with Yoda, that would be fine too. Uh, and then I would actually end the show, the season, the, the finale, with him facing off Invader one more time. Uh, and then going back to Tatooine. See, I just gave you the show. Just write the show, man. <laughs> I, I don't know. What was happening? We just don't understand the character. We'll get it in a few years. And there's also, like, what, the other lady from, um, was it Russian Doll? She's making her show. What? What's her show? Come on, guys. Announce it. Speed Don't worry this about stuff it. up. She got a show. Don't worry about it. It didn't take that long. I don't know. Especially, too, with all this coronavirus stuff. It's like, I, I feel like this should have been more opportunity to put stuff out when people were home. Or while they're home more, at least. Yeah. But I feel like most studios aren't really taking advantage of it like I think they should. I know Marvel kind of has their hand ties because they want to have Black Widow come out first before their shows. So that situation. And I, I do think they should wait and put Black Widow in, in theaters. So, um, which I also read that Falcon and the Winter Soldier is coming out in the fall now. Was it not originally supposed to come out in the fall? I don't know what they consider fall. Fall, whatever you want to consider it. I figured it was originally supposed to come out in September around then. So now I'm assuming it's getting pushed back to Thanksgiving. I don't know, maybe. Uh, and they're also going back and doing more reshoots on WandaVision, which wrapped in March, and now they're going back and filming some more. Uh, which, I mean, they might as well, because it's going to be after Falcon, so now it's been pushed back even more. So we'll see. Do you have any more movie news to talk about this week? Nope. All right, guys, that's our weekly show. Uh, we'll be back next Friday with another episode of Happy Hour. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel.